Okay, we are live, it seems. Yeah. Uh, welcome to World Clone Day, everyone. And yeah, currently it's Eric Steele here and me, Maurits van Rees. Uh, we are both release managers uh, from Plone. And yeah, Eric has been at it, at it uh, longer than I have. How long have you been release manager now? Do you remember? I think it'll be 12 years next month, um, which is... <laughs> I feel old. It's been been quite a while. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what should we talk yeah, about? Since Blown Four to Zero, yeah. Yeah, I was originally brought on to kind of um, pick up the Plone Three series, uh, and as they were making that decision, it kind of was decided. You let's just fell move away on a bit. Eric warrants that I also fell away. What's it? Uh, your sound fell away a bit, and Erica warned that my sound was apparently also falling away right before the recording. So let's hope we're not talking too much to each other. So yeah, you've okay. been here since Plone Four Zero, and I think and I since Plone Five to Two. I stepped in, and yeah, we can. Start there at least Plone 5 to 2. Or probably when World Plone Day is finished, there should already be a Plone 5 to 8, I think. They still want to release that uh, this month. Excellent. But yeah, of course, most of the you know, most of the efforts of us and all yeah, most core developers is of course in Plone 6. With Alpha 4 now, maybe a first beta once the World Plone Day is out. And yeah, we are recording this a few, or I think two weeks earlier, two weeks before World Plone Day. So the viewers uh, may know more than we do, which is which could be interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I, I was just thinking this morning about how much um, making Plone releases has changed in the last, say, ten years. Because um, when I started with it, it was it was all like, I mean, so. So Plone 3.3 introduced, kind of broke everything out from being one major package and s split it out into like many, many, many. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. grown over time. Um, and like the early days, it was it was like you, uh, you know, I, when I first started just with Plone 4, it was, you know, making every, every package, you had to manually bump the version number, manually update the readmes and uh make the release and manually push it up and um just how much we've automated i mean a lot of that's thanks to to you and the zest releaser project project but um yeah it's it's gotten i mean the the number of packages has, has grown but the the process has gotten easier i think so yeah, that does help. And we're still using the Plum Releaser package that you wrote as wrapper around Zest Releaser, probably also started 10, 12 years ago. And that still also takes care of a lot of stuff, automating things like updating the versions in the main versions file. Uh, so yeah, everything combined, it's yeah, at least releasing a small package. That's not so much work these days. That goes pretty fast. And, yeah, sometimes you have to do, do a bit more, but yeah, automating really does help uh, a lot. And uh, I think last year or so I've introduced stocks also in the mix there, which is more, yeah, we take the versions that are pinned in the core dev and I uh, create a constraints.txt file uh, from that for the people who like to use uh, pip to install everything. Uh, which is a bit harder if you need to support both Python 2 and 3, but that's also worked. And yeah, then pushing some stuff to this plone.org, which is where everything lives for the versions. And yeah, so a lot of yeah, a lot of automation yeah, is running, and yeah, and still also yeah, manual checking or reading, reviewing code. And seeing if everything is, you know, last week I decided, okay, I think on Thursday night here in Europe, like, okay, everything seems reasonably stable. Let's push out an alpha four at this moment. And that seems to mostly have worked. We needed one extra Plum Volto release to fix uh, something there. 
but that was that was mostly okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it yeah, like coordinating that sheer number of packages is, is rough, and there's always something that either nobody has caught before. You know, we've we've packaged everything up, or um, or there's kind of like a last minute. Oh wait, this needs to go in there. So there's always you know one or two packages that need to get re released uh, until it goes out to the public. Um, Uh, yeah, um, I'm trying to think like, yeah, I mean, so the release team is pretty small. It's, it's us, uh, and Timo and do we have anyone else on there? I think it's mm, largely Jill just the three is, of officially still there and we, okay. yeah. you know, yeah. mostly you and me, it's, yeah, the others sometimes also yeah, react. And then... Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're always happy to take on more people um it's mm -hmm. it's kind of a <laughs> it's a demanding job um but it's yeah i mean it, it's yeah being able to do this for the community is great so i really i enjoy it i don't know why but i enjoy it so um yeah what else should we uh talk about yeah, can we think of a date when we currently think Plan Six will be ready? That's so, that's <laughs> always tricky. I have some hopes that somewhere in I, April we can release a beta one. That you think, okay, that's fine. I'd say in the end of June that everything can be ready. I think we're saying on Plan we have a think on slash download slash release schedule something like that if you search for release schedule you can find something that i think we're now saying the second quarter of this year that we sometimes yeah, say it was first the first quarter or it was first last year and it keeps bumping up a few months every now and then but i do feel yeah. yeah like early summer this year that should be doable for a real final release yeah i i have never hit a deadline so i will <laughs> i will i will bow to your <laughs> um your expertise um yeah it's it's always tough because with with major releases you, you know typically you would say you know like for any minor release if it doesn't go in this time you know too bad it'll go in later um but uh for for these major releases it's usually you know, with the the um, the Plone Classic redo, all the all the the front end work, and with Valto, you know, if if something's not working, it's it kind of prevents the rest of the release. You know, we can't pull one of those out. Um, so there are certain things that are sort of you know they have to be in there, and they kind of control the the pace of the release. Um, so I mean the. The, the main answer, if, if, I, I always say, you know, if you want to see the release sooner, the, the, the release team is not the people you want to talk to. It's the people building the features and, and testing and, um, and all of that. Um, the the more, more testing we get early on, the better chance we have of fixing things and the less it's going to slow us down later. Um, you know, right now is when all the, the sprints are happening uh, to get these features wrapped up. So if you're able to go out and test out the alphas, um, that really, you know, then we can, we can address those at these sprints and get them taken care of early rather than it becoming a major issue, you know, two, three months from now. So yeah, I, I, I saw Erica many, just asked something. Yeah. Uh, how many packages do you have to release for a pl full plum release? That's yeah, it's hard to, I think if you look at the bin instance file that uh, build out creates, if you're still using build out, because you could also use pip, I think we have about 300 packages, but a lot of that also comes from Zoop. So yeah, I think if if we touch every package in the Plum repository that goes into the release, we might be at 100 packages. Yeah, but it's yeah. it's rare that any release has you know, touches all of those, but, um, yeah, <laughs> there are a lot. Usually it's a, a subset of those, you know, maybe 20 to 30 on average. Does that sound about, sound about right? Yeah, that could work. Yeah. There are a few that we are, that we always release like product CMF plone, which is the main one. 
if we bump the clone version, and yeah, there's translations usually. I think clone rest API is going pretty fast, so that's there's usually a release of that. And, and yeah, a, a lot can go in there. Yeah, probably every probably every package has been touched between clone five two and clone six zero. Yeah, so there's still overlap with packages that at least use the same. Uh, version branch in five two and six zero. Yeah. And Erko, yeah, we're being. Uh, Erko Andre is recording uh, this for us, and he's sometimes uh, feeding us questions. He's now asking for a cool story about being a release manager. Uh, yeah, he just asked a second question about coolest place you've released from. That was what I was going to say. Um, the <laughs> After a while, I started getting a little um, weird about it, and you know, I kind of make a, a challenge to myself to release, make plone releases from the weirdest place possible. Um, so, I think probably, I mean, I've done it. I've, I've, I haven't released packages, but I've, I've kind of like flipped the switch on the release um, from a plane before. Um, I think the the weirdest place I've ever made package releases was was in a ditch. Um, we had been visiting my uh, in laws for a holiday, and um, just after leaving, we had stopped to to get something for the kids. And it was it had snowed, it was icy, and we just kind of like slid off the road. And so my in laws came to pick them up and uh, pick my wife and kids up and take them back to the house. And I sat there and waited for the tow truck, and it took several hours so i was just sitting in the car you know tethering to my phone and making uh clone releases so it was a good use of time i think <laughs> yeah i've probably just made releases from home or maybe from the office when pre-corona i still went to an office actually but yeah that's also been a while but uh, yeah, and, uh, I do notice. Yeah, I'm mostly focusing on at least current these days on Plone Classic. So really, yeah, the the product team of Plone and all the the packages mostly on the back end. Although that's yeah the classic UI part. Yeah, it's also UI is in the name. So there's some JavaScript involved there. But I find myself not really following what is going on in Volto. So I'm really relying for that part on other people. Yeah, mostly of course the Volto team other people uh, yeah to, to test that part and that it's works fine with plum six it's yeah for me it helps to concentrate more on the back end which is yeah that's my expertise is there and yeah every now and then you have to do so, some other stuff look at the javascript parts at least you've uh, yeah we've had some uh, meetings the last few months that you pulled uh, together those with documentation team yeah photo team uh, people are working on the yeah, releasers or the and the called the Docker images or other other images. Yeah, yeah we're, we're of things. And they also translations. Yeah, we're we're trying to coordinate all the the non non code bits of, of the Plone release. Um, so getting documentation in line and and training and all the marketing and that sort of thing. Um, that's something that's really kind of picked up the last. You know, starting with Plone 5, I think we really put in an effort to, um, I mean, with Plone 4 and previous, it was like sort of the night before we made the release, there was a like three or four of us that would frantically write the like the detailed release notes. Um, and then, you know, the documentation would eventually catch up and we're trying to um, be a little more proactive about that, get that all in place beforehand. Um, it's a little tough, you know, with say documentation because it's, it's a moving target and at times and getting the the devs to pitch in um, is rough, um, but I think they're doing a, a, a good job of getting that started at least. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll make a pitch that <laughs> we need help getting all those things in line. Um, all those teams are looking for people. So um, that that's a great place to get started. I guess that was good timing. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I think that's that's essentially all we've got going on is just you know all of Plone, um, but yeah. 
Any, yeah, anything else you want to close with? Yeah, and it would like people to test uh, the alpha version or certainly better version and release candidates uh, when they are out and yeah, test it with just the classic clone that you are used to and also with uh, the new Volto uh, front end, which is also really cool. And yeah, see if you can yeah, participate. Easiest could be to contribute yeah, to documentation or look at how well the translations for your language uh, are. I know I need to look at Dutch translations at least. There's lots more uh, to add. Um, documentation can also be, okay, copy a file from the current Plum 5.2 documentation, change a few lines, and that might be even okay for part of the documentation at least. But, yeah, there's lots of things you can look at. There's probably on github.com slash plone. There's probably a project board that you can look on on things that should still be, be done uh, before Plone 6 final uh, can be released. So if you want, if people view this and want to uh, help, then uh, uh, help is more than uh, welcome. Absolutely. So I think we can say thank you very much for watching and enjoy the next recording and see you soon, hopefully. Thanks. Bye.